Without a doubt, one of the most important tools in my recording system software arsenal is SonarWorks Reference 4 System Wide. In this video, I'm going to talk about what it is and how to set it up. When we mix on our DAW, it's essential that our mix translates to other systems. This is why we buy studio reference monitors and we don't mix on our home theater systems. Home theater systems, home listening systems impart color, extra treble, extra bass, they have characteristic sounds, and chances are those characteristics will not translate nicely to other people's systems. The reason for this is because speakers create waves and these waves bounce off the walls. Even if you have sound panels in your room like I do all over the place, there are still reflections and these reflections affect the overall sound that you're hearing. This is where SonarWorks Reference 4 system-wide comes in. SonarWorks software takes into account all the imperfections and idiosyncrasies of your room and factors that into the overall sound that you're hearing from your speakers. So ideally, what you get is a more neutral sound that will better translate to other people's listening systems. I'm going to go through the entire measuring process for you in my room, and at the end of it, you'll get to see what my room EQ is, what the compensation curve is, and what the resultant EQ that I should be hearing is after the correction is applied. So to start out, you need two things. You'll need to have the SonarWorks Reference 4 system-wide software, and you'll also need to have a calibration microphone, like this one made by SonarWorks. To start out with, you'll notice that I have the control panels for my sound card open on my desktop. I have the Universal Audio X8 sound card. I have console open here so I can adjust microphone settings, and I have console settings open here so I can adjust things like the sample rate. So the first thing you're going to do is open up SonarWorks Measure and just start typing Measure, and it should be the first thing that comes up. Move this over here. I'm gonna go into settings first off here and I'm going to change the default signal to signal C. I found that that works best in my room. If you're finding problems with echo location when you're doing the mic placements, try different settings in this menu option here. So we're going to choose to measure our speakers and it gives us a checklist. Make sure that the phantom power is on. And again, that's for the reference mic right here. And you'll see right here, I do have the phantom power on. You will not want any other settings set like the low cut, phase, pad, any of that. All you want on is the phantom power, so check. Make sure your microphone input is not routed directly into your speaker outputs. That's why I have this muted here. Otherwise, I'd be hearing audio coming through the speakers from that microphone and it would create a tremendous amount of feedback. A single audio interface is used for mic input and output to speakers. Simple, I'm going to be using my Universal Audio Apollo X8. And finally, the audio interface sample rate is set to 44.1, and you'll notice right here, I have it set to 44.1. The next thing you're going to do is input the serial number of your SonarWorks microphone if you're using one of their microphones, or if you're using a microphone that has a calibration file, you can put that in right here. You'll use different measurement microphone and it will allow you to put that in. But I'm using a SonarWorks reference microphone, so nice and simple, I just put in my serial number. It pulls up the curve of my microphone right there, so it factors that into all the measurements and it will do the same if you use your own microphone that has its own calibration file. On this screen here, I'm going to set the input and output devices. You can see if I tap the microphone, it shows level. And this is where I'm going to set the output device as well. And again, that's my Universal Audio Apollo X8. And just to make sure, I'm going to play the test audio. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Left speaker. Right speaker. 
So you notice during that playback, I turned the output volume up on my speakers because the level that I was hearing was a little bit lower than conversation volume. In fact, I found from doing this that it works a little bit better, at least from my experience, if you have the speakers a little bit louder than conversation volume. They do not need to be loud, but they need to be a little bit louder than conversation volume. So once we've set up all the internal settings in measure four, the next thing is to adjust the microphone gain. We're going to start by putting the microphone in the sweet spot. So I'm gonna move my chair out of the way and then put my microphone in the sweet spot. You can see I've already set it at ear level for me and you'll want to do the same for yourself because that's where the sound is coming in, right? At your ear level. I set the countdown to two or three seconds because you'll see that we're doing so many measurements that it ends up taking a lot of extra time with the countdowns. So at first my microphone level was too loud, so I turned the gain down in my sound card control panel settings. For the next part of the process, we're going to be adjusting the microphone gain and then determining the distance between the two speakers. For the first part of this, you'll notice I have the microphone positioned at ear level in the sweet spot dead center. This is where we're going to adjust the gain to make sure that it's not too loud, not too quiet. If you need to make adjustments, this is where you'll adjust your microphone input gain. Now for the part where we measure the distance between the two speakers, you're going to take your reference microphone off the stand and you're going to be holding it to the mid-range driver about a half inch away from the cone for the measurements. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Now we do the same thing for the right speaker. Two more. Two more. Right speaker done. Now, if we've done this well and it's done its job, it's gonna show us the distance between the two speakers and that's from the center of each mid-range driver. Showing six foot eight, which I know to be absolutely perfect. Next, we're going to locate our listening spot. And again, you wanna have this at ear level for you, dead center in the sweet spot. I sit right up on my desk, so this is right about where my ears are. It has me sitting four feet away from each speaker, which again, I know to be correct because I've done the measurements. Keep in mind, if this is not correct for you, you can adjust these numbers using these. And uh, you can also uncenter it by clicking that. And so that could be 311, four foot, etc. Now here's the fun part. This is where we're going to measure, I believe it's 37 different spots in the room. And what you're going to do is move the mic around by echolocation. It can tell where the microphone is. So you're just going to follow what it's showing on screen. So if you need to move forward, move back. And then once it settles, make sure that you do not move the microphone and then it's on to the next spot from there. and the crowd goes wild. Ooh. Now we get to see how the correction actually applies to my room. 
So let's go ahead and load everything up. We'll start by making sure that our audio device is selected. For me, it's that. And then I'm going to add a preset. Select the profile, and this is where I'm going to open a profile and select the new one. You'll see that it selects my sound device here, selects the correct channels, and then it gives it a name following the naming scheme that I already used. So we'll add this preset. There's my room with no correction. Here it is corrected, and let's take a look at the correction curve. So the green line here is what's actually being applied to give us this ultimately fairly flat frequency response here. We'll notice that there's a fairly significant gain reduction here. Um, so to compensate for all these boosts, just so you don't overload your speakers, it's taking about seven decibels off and that's going to vary based on your measurement. Now, I know that I don't like this all the way up at 100%. I like it at about 83%. I've tested this before, I encourage you to do the same. So now after moving the wet dry to 83%, we'll see that the safe headroom has adjusted a little bit. So now it's just taking just under six decibels off for the total correction. Now when I listen back to music on my system with Sonarworks Reference 4 enabled, whether it be listening to music from my library or mixing in my DAW, what I hear should be a more accurate representation because Reference 4 is taking out the defects imparted by my room onto the sound put out by my speakers. And what I especially love about Reference 4 is that I can listen to music from my library so I can tune my ears to music that I like, music that's been professionally produced, get used to that sound, and that way when I move into my DAW, I'm working with the exact same sound set using reference for inside the control room in Cubase. So I have that same calibration being applied. I have to be honest, I love Sonarworks Reference 4. It's a total game changer in terms of enabling me to hear music how it's supposed to sound in my very, very imperfect room. It just sits quietly in the background and compensates for all the deficiencies of my room. I highly encourage you to check out Reference 4 and again, to get it set up, you'll need to get one of these reference mics. I just got one from them. You can buy one elsewhere, but with theirs, what's great is you get that mic calibration profile built in. All you need to do is put in the serial number. It knows the EQ curve of the mic and you're good to go. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.